Uh, so today I'm going to be doing a version of my, it's kind of going to be like the how to get your makeup to look like skin, uh, slash like how to make it last all day, that whole kind of thing. I'm kind of combining them. They're very similar. Um, my techniques, if you have not seen those, I'm going to link them up here because there are going to be certain steps that I'm going to fast forward through because I've already done those videos very much in depth. The difference is today I'm going to be showing you how you can achieve these things with SPF as your base, okay? When I uploaded those videos, I got so many comments from people who were like, okay, but where's the SPF step? <laughs> so you can kind of like take those, uh, those videos as these are things that I typically like to do when it's like an evening thing. For the most part in my life, uh, other than filming, I am doing a full face of makeup in the evening. So the sun's gone down. I'm not worried about making my makeup work with SPF. But obviously a lot of you, like you're going to school, you're going to work, maybe you're going to like a daytime thing. I don't know, weddings happen, happen during the day. Just life, life happens. Maybe you like to wear a full face every single day. And with that sun, bro, you gotta protect your skin, right? So we're going to rewind real quick to early this morning. I'm gonna talk you through the steps that I went through um, because obviously skin prep is a very important thing. And again, I would suggest that you watch either one of these, whichever one um, stands out to you more, whichever one you think would be, would like be tailored more towards your particular like taste of makeup. Uh, the steps are very similar. It's just like focusing on slightly different things. Watch that first, because otherwise you're gonna be like, I'm missing details up in here, up in here, okay? So yes, I'm very aware that I look real shiny right now. So like I said, Skin prep, very important. Making sure that your skin is prepared to receive the makeup, very important. Uh, this morning I woke up, first thing I did was, well, the first thing I did was make myself some coffee. Uh, and then I washed my face. I used a very gentle cleanser. I like to do this, especially in the mornings. I usually use like a gentle or a cream cleanser or something that isn't going to be like super harsh because I typically use, use my treatments at night. Uh, and especially if it's like a day where um, I need my skin to look like flawless. I don't want to, I would rather deal with hydrating a breakout than overdoing a treatment the night before I have some kind of an event and I need my skin to be like well hydrated. I don't want it to look dry, you know what I mean? Like I would rather conceal a breakout than deal with dry patches. Uh, so we're focusing on hydration here. So after I cleansed with that, then I just did a sheet mask. This is pretty typical for me um, on filming days. I would say that I don't necessarily do this every single time before like, I don't know, a special occasion or every, definitely not every single time I do a full face of makeup. But um, I like to dermaplane the night before I film. And so it just feels, I don't know, it just feels like extra, that extra moisture is just like very helpful. This is like the kind of thing that I would suggest for like a wedding or like a very special event. Then I had to clean my, finish cleaning my oven. So I went and did that for a while, <laughs> while that like sunk in. And then I went in with my typical base which I use uh, on the days that I'm filming. The only difference is that I use a little bit of a hyaluronic acid serum from Vichy underneath my eyes first. And then I went in with my Tatcha water cream. I always get the names mixed up. Water cream as my moisturizer. Uh, and then the Tatcha dewy skin cream underneath and around my eyes. Uh, and then I popped a little bit in like some slightly, like whatever was left over in some slightly drier areas of my face. These are very expensive. So I use them when I'm doing like a full face of makeup uh, when I have a special occasion, it's my favorite base for makeup. Now I let that sink in for a very long time, okay? I did that first thing in the morning and I needed to make breakfast. I had to like do some emails, post some things. I just had like stuff that I needed to do around the apartment, feed the cats, you know, that kind of stuff. I just let that sink in while I was getting ready. You wanna make sure that you are allowing your skincare to sink in significantly before you apply your SPF, because if you apply it too much, too much? If you apply it too soon, it is just gonna mix with those other skincare products and it's going to reduce the efficacy of your SPF. So just keep that in mind. Now let's talk sunscreen. None of them are perfect. None of them are perfect. I've been looking for the perfect sunscreen my entire life, I don't know, like, literally my entire life, not really, maybe like the past three or four years. Um, the one that I have recently fallen in love with is this one from the brand, I think the brand is Kose. I don't know if I'm saying any of this right. And then I think the classification or like the category is Sekise. It is, uh, I 
think it's like a hybrid sunscreen. I don't even actually know. It's Japanese. Uh, the first one that I got was one of the versions in when I was in Japan and it was the waterproof one, which I still use, but they have like a few different ones. They have a waterproof one, they have like a gel, and then they have this one, which is like the milk or something. I think it's called the milk. Um, it's very lightweight, not super drying. Uh, and what I love about it is that it's the only type of like sunscreen like this that isn't going to like leave a white cast, no pilling. It also doesn't sting my eyes, which is like, if you're like me and chemical sunscreen sting your eyes, then makeup and sunscreen, so difficult, so difficult. Uh, Cause you know, those, those, um, those physical sunscreens, the, uh, 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 what do you call that? Physical, is it just called a physical sunscreen? The ones that contain like zinc and stuff. So often you get pilling and it'll make your face look way too oily uh, or way too dry eventually. It's just like a lot. So uh, finding obviously the correct sunscreen is really important. And, and if you notice that your sunscreen tends to dry you out a little bit throughout the day, you really, really want to take that like early morning hydration really, really seriously. I realize that people don't have like all day long <laughs> to, to like prep their skin for makeup. So, you know, if you have to wake up super early in the morning, do all of your like crazy hydration the night before. Maybe dermaplane, if you dermaplane or exfoliate or whatever, the day, like two days before. The night before, do like your sheet masks, do your hydration. That way when you wake up in the morning, you're already like relatively ready to go. You can apply like your serum and your um, moisturizer, let that sink in for 15 minutes, apply your sunscreen, give that 15 minutes, and then jump into your makeup routine. Uh, that's just like 30 minutes, you know? Again, while you're like making a coffee or having your breakfast or whatever the hell you do, you know? <sighs> so let's see what time is it. So it's been probably 20 minutes, actually a little over 20 minutes since I have applied my sunscreen. So we are ready for application. Let's just get into this, okay? Okay, so typically at this point, I would go in with my primer. Now, something that I did in those other videos is I introduced the addition of an, a moisturizing primer. Uh, my current favorite, like, combination have, have been the Photo Finish Smooth and Blur and then the Smashbox Primer. Well, they're both Smash... Both Smashbox. I've been mixing these, that's it. Uh, it gives a beautiful base. It's nice and hydrating, but it's also a little bit smooth. Now, the addition of my sunscreen has really like kind of created that base already. When I touch my skin, I've got like a little bit of a grip there and you can obviously see like a really nice hydration. There are certain areas of my face, like for instance, my T-zone, where I tend to get like a little bit oily throughout the day. So all I'm gonna do is take the tiniest amount of this uh, photo finish blue, uh, blue, bruh, I can't talk today. Smooth and blur. I'm literally putting like a dab. You can't even see it, it's so tiny on the back of my hand. And I'm going to first work it into the back of my hand with my finger and then just really gently pat this, literally only in the areas where um, I tend to get like a little bit oily throughout the day. Because we all know that the addition of sunscreen, that is uh, something that you're increasing your risk of when you add sunscreen, at least I know. That's a big problem for me. And I'm patting rather than swiping so that I'm kind of pressing this into my pores because I don't want to be mixing that product in with my SPF and reduce the efficacy. I know like I've had a few people question me um, on that as far as I know, because I've heard from dermatologist Dr. Dre and also lab muffin beauty science, that overworking your sunscreen can reduce its efficacy. So you can go check out their channels. I'll link them down below. If you have more questions on that, I'm not a dermatologist or is lab, lab muffin beauty science, is she a cos cosmetic chemist? Um, I'm not, I'm just listening. I'm listening to the peeps who know the research. So we've reduced a little bit of shine. It's a little bit more smooth in those areas. Now, now, you guys, guess what? All the steps are gonna be the same. The same as usual, okay? I'm going to speed through this part a little bit because like I said, please watch those other videos because they're so in depth for each one of these steps. Uh, I got a new LA Girl Pro Conceal in light ivory and I'm super excited about it. How is this ivory? I like, look, okay, listen, look, look at that. I love this product. I use it as a color corrector. It's fantastic. But 
How is that ivory? It's peach. It's like a light peach. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. You should see how it looks on the website. Where did I buy this? I think I got it from Camera Ready Cosmetics. I'm looking at the website, I'm like, not, e not even close to the same color that you are displaying right now. So I'm gonna go in with my under eye color corrector as usual. You'll notice that throughout this process with the SPF, I'm gonna be really, really delicate with my application. Again, because I do not want to disturb my sunscreen protection. For foundation, I'm gonna use my new favorite one. Um, I am working with them right now, but this is not sponsored. Uh, the Smashbox always on. I'm obsessed, obsessed. I love it so much. It's so good, especially if you um, get oily anywhere throughout the day. It's so good. It's like the only one that prevents it. So I'm gonna mix FN30, wait, F30, wait, F30N and F20W, like literally one pump of each. Now I am using a damp sponge to apply this. However, uh, if you watch those other videos, then you would see me often like spray my sponge to like hydrate it extra or um, rehydrate it with a mist. I'm not doing that. I really wrung it out this time. I'm like really making sure there's no like water. It's just soft uh, so that I, again, am not like putting too much moisture on top of that SPF. I personally think that um, you don't necessarily, you don't really need to use a prime, like you don't need to use a primer really, unless you're using like a little bit of a pore filling primer when you are using SPF, because in my experience, um, SPF really creates like a really, really nice grip to the skin. Like if you have a little bit of that like tacky feeling after you apply your SPF, that's like exactly what you want because your foundation is just gonna like stick to it, you know? Next concealer, I'm going to be um, using the Tower 28 concealer, which I've really been liking. The only problem is that like the, the colors are really weird for me. Um, so I'm gonna use BH and CC. I'm just gonna be like kind of mixing them. Same thing with the sponge. It's, bar it's barely damp, it's just soft. There's no like, I'm not like pressing water into my skin right now. If you do prefer using a brush for these techniques, uh, I think that's a good thing because you're not like adding that additional moisture. So you're less likely probably to disturb the SPF. That being said, um, make sure that you're not doing like harsh swiping. One of the best ways to apply, I think, is more of like, um, I don't even have a brush that like, cause I hate applying my foundation with a brush, but this kind of motion like more of a padding and tapping kind of motion on top of your sunscreen so that you're not disturbing, again, the SPF. You're gonna get super sick of me saying that, but... Like we'd, we're going through all of the trouble to actually like apply it, you know? We wanna make sure that we're not like ruining the efficacy so we actually like reap the benefits. Okay, now another thing that I'm adjusting in this process with the SPF is I'm not going in with my mists in between each layer. And the reason for that is because I am, most of the time, when I'm doing those like mists between layers, it's because I'm trying, hello? It's because I'm trying to create that grip. I'm trying to maintain that grip and set everything in between so that I have, so that my skin has that grip. Does that make sense? It's that creating that staying power between each layer and creating grip between each layer. I don't know if, that's make, if that makes any sense. This has a lot to do with like my process. The reason I'm gonna save that step for the end is Again, because of the introduction of the SPF. I'm not trying to mess with it in any way. Like I said, I'm trying to like limit the amount of like heavy product that I'm putting on top of it. Not that my application is ever heavy in any way. Um, I mean, I guess people could argue with that, but I'm trying to minimize the amount of products, especially liquid on my face. So we are going to be using a setting mist. I'm gonna save it for the end. I'm gonna go in with my contour now, Anastasia Beverly Hills Fawn. You know her, you know the girl. Okay, and similar to my other videos, uh, my application is very, very gentle. So holding my brush way, way, way back. And I'm not even really like doing the like bounce thing that I was showing you in those other videos. I'm kind of just like patting. I mean, it's still a bounce, but I there's like hardly any like um, 
there's like zero pull of the brush over the skin because again, SPF, SPF. So it's just bouncing, just bouncing. Okay, so if you did watch those other videos that I recommended, which you absolutely should, otherwise you're gonna be lost, uh, this, we are in our cream, we're in the cream era, all right? So we're applying all of our creams, all of our cream products right now. So now I'm gonna go into my cream bronzer, again, being very intentional with how I'm applying each product and keeping that layer of SPF in mind. And then I'm going to finish off with my cream blush. Okay, cream's done. Uh, the ones that I didn't like show you are linked down below. Uh, now we're gonna go into our powder. So I'm gonna set my face. I'm gonna do this again, exactly the way that I did in those other videos. I'm going to set my under eyes with the e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder. And then I'm gonna go in with the Givenchy Prism. <laughs> my intuition is to say it in the French accent, but I have to like really think about it. Prisma, Prisma Libre. <laughs> and I know that all my French speakers who watch this are like, you're doing great <laughs> and I appreciate you, thank you. I really appreciate it. Now the difference with this powder application, rather than applying just like in the T-zone, I'm gonna focus it in the T-zone, but then I'm gonna gently bring it all around the face. My other, in my other videos, I kinda like padded just so that it wasn't like super matte in one area. And also I wanna make sure that I'm like setting essentially the whole face, especially when I'm trying to like make my, my makeup look like skin. I just, I don't really like using a ton of powder, but today I'm applying just like a teeny bit more. So not like dousing my face in powder, but something that uh, is a problem for a lot of people. I just realized I didn't spot conceal that little spot. We'll figure it out. It's because I'm gonna go in with my like powder products, versions of all of these steps to set. And I wanna make sure that I am not, again, <laughs> you're gonna be so sick of this, disrupting the sunscreen. So I wanna make sure that I have a layer that those powders are going to glide over very easily. All right, round two, powders, contour, bronzer, blush. <laughs> Watch those other videos. Oh wow, I didn't contour my lips. Weird. That's so weird. I always do that. The hell? Okay, now is the final step. I'm going to set. I'm going to use the D Slick from Urban Decay. You can also use the All Nighter from Urban Decay for like extra staying power. Personally, I like the D-Slick just because it like prevents me from getting oily, but I don't really need it. Maybe I should just use the old nighter. Let's use the old nighter, fuck it. I'm gonna make sure that I'm holding it back. I don't wanna like spray at my face like this, um, but I do wanna make sure that I'm giving my skin a nice like even misting. And I have this Patrick Ta fan, which I use to set it immediately. So it's not just sitting there. So you can use your hands, you know, you don't need a fan, but like whatever. All right, guys, this is the finished result of the uh, SPF base. Let me give you a deep zoom. Gorgeous, yeah? Right? You can do it with SPF. You just gotta find that SPF. Okay, so those are all of my tricks, but applied to SPF. The main thing is basically like how you adjust your skin prep for the SPF. And then also like little tips for applications so that you're not disturbing the SPF. Uh, it's just about finding that product. And I understand it's so difficult, trust me, trust me. Even the sunscreen that I'm wearing right now is not completely perfect. Like, it's not completely perfect. Um, it is definitely the closest that I have gotten though. And it really works with makeup so beautifully. So I do recommend. Um, I think I got it on Yes Style. I think you can get it from Style Vana, you know. And if you have sensitive eyes, it does, I mean, if you put it in your eyes, it'll sting, you know, don't put it in your eyes. Uh, but I can use it around my eyes without it irritating them. And then the final thing that I would just wanna say is like, if you're wearing makeup all day long, you gotta be realistic about SPF application. We have to live our lives at some point, right? 
Now there are things that brands have made to reapply SPF over makeup, for instance, translucent powder, and also like the mists. There are some mists, I think Kula has a mist. From what I've heard from basically everyone, including dermatologists, is that they're not perfect. They are never going to, the mist, the, um, powder, they're never going to apply the amount of SPF that you really need to like create that protection that just like blending on a sunscreen is going to. That being said, it's better than nothing, right? Uh, if it makes you feel like you're doing something, I think that like doing it is better than not doing it at all. If you're in a position where you're just like outside in the sun all day, try to be in the shade, you know, like try to take like little measures so that you're protecting your sun, your, your sun, your skin. You put the sunscreen on, you did as much as you possibly can. Don't fret, you know? You're human and you have to live your life at some point. We can't constantly be thinking like, oh my God, it's like, you know, an hour and a half or two hours on the dot. I have to reapply my sunscreen immediately when you're like at brunch with friends. Like you just, we gotta be realistic about it, okay? So don't beat yourself up about it. It's really good. If you're applying sunscreen once a day, you're like doing way more than most people, okay? Pat on the back. <laughs> I'm proud of you. I just gotta put a little, um, Auric on because my lips are feeling very dry. Auric Plush Ritual. They gave me a coupon code. I think you get 10% off. And I think it's just Alex or Alexandra. I can't remember what the code is. Um, but it's down below. I'll put it on the screen. Wow, I never finished my brows. Whatever. Uh, all right. I hope this was helpful, at least in terms of maybe helping you figure out like what uh, order to do everything in and also just like little tips and tricks for how to navigate wearing SPF with makeup uh, and also hopefully some like realistic little um, truths, some truths. There's some truths that we all need to acknowledge. Um, whatever. Let me know what you thought of this video uh, in retrospect a little bit. I feel like I could have used a little less powder in my T-zone. Like I'm, I kind of forgot that I've been using the Smashbox foundation and it's it just does such a good job of um, regulating my oil. So even with, like if you're looking for a foundation, seriously, this is not sponsored. I just really have fallen in love with it. If you're looking for a foundation that's gonna like help to maintain hydration without making you oily, uh, or will like prevent oiliness throughout the day, it's just so good. Like it's the only one that I've been using. It's so good, I love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it. That's it. Hope you enjoyed, hope it helped. Let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. That's apparently, it's my new sign off. Fingers. Bye.